In this video, we're going to see how to create a feature branch in a pull request using Visual Studio 2017 with the C-Sharp project in GitHub. So first of all, why, why do a feature branch? Well, sometimes we say, hey, I'm not ready to commit, commit my stuff yet. It's not finished. The problem is that takes away from the idea of transparency, which is big in Scrum. And that means everybody can see what everybody else is doing. Well, with the feature branch, you can essentially take a look at the source code in a point in time, uh, clone that, or, or basically duplicate that, do all of your work in that side branch, and then when you're ready, when everything is done, you can merge it back into the tip or the master branch. It's f f pretty easy to do in Visual Studio with GitHub, and it has a lot of benefits because it allows you to show your progress and show your work, uh, but at the same time, only mix your work with the main line of work when your work is ready to go. In our class, we're going to be using this for code reviews. This isn't a traditional code review. Uh, it's a code review where you make your suggestions in code, and I'll show how to do that. So what are the steps? First, have a GitHub repository. Then add a collaborator who's going to be your code reviewer. Then clone the project in Visual Studio. And then in Visual Studio, create a branch. Commit and push to that branch and be very careful that you're committing and pushing to that branch and not to master because you don't want to be committing and pushing to master where all the production ready code is. Now on GitHub, once you've commit and pushed, you can create a pull request and then you can add any commentary and then you can, if you wish, you can merge your branch uh, back into master. So we'll take a look at each of those steps in this video. So first we have a repository. Sure enough, we do, we have several repositories. Here's one where I just do some experiments to get ready for class. I call it pre-class 7024. Look very carefully. You'll notice it says two branches. Uh, yours probably says one when you start off. I, the reason why I have two is I was just practicing for this video and I happened to make a second one. Okay, so we're, we're here in this pre-class 7024. Now, the next thing we need to do is add collaborators. So I go to settings and then collaborators, uh, go ahead and log in. Uh oh, log in with my super secret, super secure password. And there we go. Now for collaborators, we need to add somebody else who has an account on our GitHub site. This is an enterprise GitHub site. In other words, it's within the uc.edu domain. If you take a look up on the address bar, you can see that. So uh, within this domain, anybody who's a UC student, faculty, or staff can have an account. So all I need to do is put in the Bearcat ID, which is the, the last name, uh, six plus two. I believe that the that the directory service is just not working at the moment. It normally is, but that's okay. I, I ran through an experiment earlier and I can show you that if I say R-A-J-A-G-O-A-H, normally add collaborator will, will light up. It will also autocomplete with a list of potential users. As soon as I choose add collaborator, uh, that user will appear up here on the screen. So that's what it will look like. As I said, it looks like the, the lookup service isn't working and I confirm that because I had trouble looking at collaborators at other projects. No big deal. We can proceed uh, with the video because I'm code reviewing myself in this video. So um, let's go back and uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to run back to the repo. I'll run back to the repo we were looking at, the pre-class 7024. And we remember that this has two branches. Now, here's what we need to do for Visual Studio. I go to clone or download and I'm going to click this copy to clipboard. Now I'm going to go to Visual Studio and I'm going to click the little plug on Team Explorer for Manage Connections. I choose Clone and now I Control and V which pastes in the URL I grabbed from this screen over here. Okay, now I just want to put it, I, I want to put it in a place where I'm going to remember so I'll make a directory code review and then pre-class 7024 uh, that doesn't matter. I can call it 7024 review, something like that. Really doesn't matter. This is just saying, where am I going to save this project? Now I choose clone. Okay, so let this go for a moment. And let's look for that project. Uh, Pre-class 7024 review. You see, I have several projects up here from when I was grading earlier. Uh, your view probably won't show that. So I select the project that I want to take a look at. And now this is the tricky part. Once I've selected the project, I need to run down here and I need to double click on the solution to open the solution file. 
Okay, now very careful on this part. What we want to do in a feature branch is we want to take this project, which is the project at the point in time, and we basically want to make a little branch where we can do our own work. So we have to be very careful here because we have to do this exact step at this exact point. Go to the lower right where you see master and then choose new branch. Now I'm going to, we have to name the branch. I'll name it with my, my Bearcat ID Jones BR dash code review. Okay, now in a traditional code review, you'll do a little write-up and you'll just say, here are some recommendations, pass, fail, nonetheless. But the way we're doing a code review, we're doing a code review in the feature branch. So you can actually show the project team the changes that you suggest by doing those changes. Now, if I scroll down here, we see that I have something called webform2.aspx. And in Visual Studio, it's really easy to leave things at their default names like Webform2 uh, when there might be a more descriptive name we can give it. So an excellent code review suggestion would be to right click on this and then simply say rename and give it a more useful name. So why don't we call it something like uh, web service uh, demos.aspx, something that describes what we're doing on this page. And there we go. Uh, save and a quick code review suggestion. I could go to another class if I want. Maybe I'll go to my app code and I'll go to my plant. And if I take a look at plant, I might say, gosh, I encapsulated genus and common, but you know what? I didn't encapsulate species, cultivar, or ID, but that's really easy to do. So I'll say encapsulate field. Uh, over here, I'll say encapsulate field. And over here again, I'll say encapsulate field. And look, I've just made several more code review suggestions, so now I can save. Okay, what we do not want to do is, is have a conversation here. We do not want to say, hey, I thought I'd encapsulate this for you. Uh, that's good information, and that's information that we can use, uh, but there's a time and place for that, and now is not that time and place. We'll get to that in just a moment. So I go to Team Explorer, and now I'm going to click on the home, and I'm going to scroll up until I see changes, and I'm going to confirm that I see my changes. I see my web service demo. I see that's been renamed. I see the web form 2 has a strike through indicating that it's been removed. And I see plant.cs, which is this guy who I changed over here. So very important, double check that you are pushing to the correct uh, to the correct branch, see Jones BR Code Review 2, uh, and up here, Jones BR Code Review branch. I'm sorry, yeah, Jones BR Code Review. I can't stress that enough. If you mistakenly commit to master and you're not really on that project team, you could be changing what they have that's considered a gold standard. It's really best to keep these in a separate branch. So I'll say I made some code review changes around encapsulation and uh, encapsulation and naming conventions. That's it. That's it. That's fine. There's going to be plenty more time to do have a conversation later. So I'm going to commit and push, but once again, just absolutely confirm that I'm pushing to the correct branch. Let's go ahead and let that push. And there we go. Okay. Now I come back. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's pushing as we speak. So we'll give this just a moment. And we see successfully pushed Brands Jones BR code review to origin. So I come back here and take a look. Notice that GitHub automatically updated and it says, hey, you have a new branch. Now, remember before we had two branches. Watch when I refresh the page. And now we have three branches. Now we have this Jones BR code review branch that's been pushed. If I take a look at this Jones BR code review branch, I can take a look at the commit history by simply clicking on this nine commits. And here's what's really interesting. We see all of the commits and the pushes that I've done historically on this, and now we see my code review changes. Uh, so now let's go back and let's go to master branch and notice there are only eight commits. So the eight commits that my code review branch has, uh, it has those same eight commits here, but my code review branch has an additional commit which is the commit that I just made. That only went to my code review branch. Okay, wonderful. So now we have this branch. Now let's say it's, if it's a feature branch, we've done our unit testing, our acceptance testing, 
And the thing is, even working in our own branch, we can still do our debugging, we can, we can run the application, and those are things we definitely want to do before we push, but we can do that all in our own branch. So now let's say, okay, I'm happy with the feature, I'm finished with my work, I'm ready to create a pull request. So I'm gonna click compare and, and pull request. And now what we're saying is I want to start this conversation around taking this branch and mixing it in with the production stuff in the master branch. So here's the place where we can put some commentary. I saw you have a, uh, a form called web form two. I renamed it to be more appropriate. Okay, uh, and then also I encapsulated some fields that were not encapsulated. Okay, now I'm just going to click create pull request and, and in our class uh, where you're doing code reviews at this point you're done, you're good. Take this pull request, submit it on Blackboard, that's what I'll take a look at when I do some grading. Okay, we have not merged it yet though. We don't wanna merge it if you're doing code review or if the group is just not ready to merge. Uh, the group can decide whether or not to merge the branch. Now, for code review purposes, if you're using this as a code review, as I'm doing, uh, here's what I will do when I'm grading it. I will go over here to Files Changed and I can see exactly what you changed. I see the before and then the after. I see what's red, which you removed, what's green, which you added, and what's white, which you did not change. Now the nice thing here is you see this plus, I can make an inline comment and say, I like the encapsulation. This is a good idea. When I said that, uh, when I said that, um, uh, and I can go ahead and start a review here if I want, but uh, or I can just add a comment if I want. When I said we don't want to have a conversation in code, there's a time and a place for it. This is the time and the place. Uh, right up here where we have, where we can take a look at this difference, uh, this is the time and the place where we want to have a conversation, a lot like an instant message conversation. And we just want to discuss, are these changes appropriate? Are they what we want to do? Okay, so we have the conversation and then uh, we still haven't merged, but at this time uh, we can decide, is this something we want to merge or is this something we don't want to merge? Again, for the code review assignment, you don't need to merge, um, but for uh, just to show you how to do it, the team that you are reviewing does have that option just to directly merge in your changes, okay? And so if I wanted to merge this, what I would do is I would go down and look to see if it can be merged automatically. If it can, we're in good luck. Uh, then we just choose Merge Pull Request and Confirm Merge. And now all of these changes from this feature branch are now in Master. So let's go back. Uh, let's take a look at Branch Master. We see 10 commits and what do we have? Give it just a moment to render. Okay, so we see the code review change that we originally had in our feature branch, and then we see that the merge counts as another commit. So if you remember, just a few moments ago, we only had eight commits in master. Now we have 10. The, uh, the commits from the feature branch, and there could be more than one over time, we could have plenty, and then the pull request, uh, that counts as a commit as well. So uh, that's a look at feature branches. I mentioned that I'm using this feature branch concept as a code review concept, just so we can get a bit of practice trying out code reviews. But incidentally, when you do have a feature branch set up in GitHub, you can actually do a code review right here in GitHub. Uh, if you remember when I added that inline comment, there was also an option to start a review. So you can actually do a code review there as well if you wish. Couple different ways you can use it. But I would say, if you're not using feature branches in GitHub, you're really not using all of GitHub's potential. And Visual Studio with the GitHub integration makes it very easy. One note, uh, the next time you do use this project in Visual Studio, you do want to synchronize it uh, because there may have been changes that have happened that you now want to include. So just make sure that you synchronize with uh, with that um, GitHub URL to make sure that you've pulled in any changes from the feature branch after you've mer merged the feature branch. So hope this has been helpful. 
Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.